This is an app demonstration for Project Live EYFS Unit 1. In this video I'm going to show you how to use the iPad app I Can Animate to create a simple stop motion animation. Once you've gone into the I Can Animate app, which looks like this, you'll need to create a new project by pressing the add button in the top right hand corner and then this will activate the camera. Now when you're creating a stop motion animation you need to make sure that your iPad is secure and in a stable position so here I've got it propped up using the iPad case that it's in if you've got an iPad stand or an iPad mount of some kind then obviously use that but do make sure it's in a, a fixed position if the camera keeps getting nudged or it keeps wobbling about then the final video won't look particularly great so get your camera set up nice and stable make sure that you've got a good light as well if you're going to be filming it in front of a green screen like I am I'm here now you don't have to film it in front of the green screen you could ask your pupils to design the backgrounds uh, themselves so they could draw uh, the background scenes and create the, the actual scene uh, for themselves but in this particular example I'm just going to film it in front of the green paper as I'm going to add in a separate separate background image using the green screen doing app and that will just make it look a little bit more realistic now in terms of the actual characters that are going to be in the animation, I'm just using some, some toy characters here that I've got. You could use something similar or you could use Lego if you've got access to Lego. Uh, you could even get the pupils involved again and, and ask them to make some characters using Play-Doh or, or Plasticine. So it, it's up to you how you want to do that. Now obviously as I say get the camera set up in uh, a good position. If you're filming it in front of the green screen like this just make sure you can see uh, all, of, all of the green and then just get your your characters for your first scene set up in the right position so in this little simple scene here i'm just going to have these two fireman character fireman sam characters here and i'm going to have another uh, character who who drives the fire uh, helicopter he's going to come uh, down from the sky i'm going to have him landing roughly about here and the idea is that these two here are going to start to walk over uh, towards him and have a conversation with him so the actual process of doing the stop motion animation is quite simple you basically just uh, take photographs every time you move uh, a character or a, a body part of the character you um, capture photos of them so we refer to these as frames and I tend to take five frames uh, each time I move uh, a particular character uh, basically the more more frames you capture that the longer uh, the animation will last I roughly go on the principle of about 100 frames, gives me about 10 uh, seconds of, of footage. So in this scene I'm going to aim for about 100 frames again. So I've just got my characters in the right position where I want them to be at the beginning. So I'm ready to start capturing some frames. So to do that you just basically press this red button here. So as I say I'm just going to press it five times each time. So I'll just press the red button. Okay, so we'll start to create a little bit of movement now. So I think I might start by just having Officer Steele moving his left arm. So these particular figures I'm using are quite good. It should look quite realistic because you can actually move uh, the individual body parts as well. So just have him moving his left arm up as if he's pointing at something that he's just seen. And here you can see actually it's, it shows you uh, where the last uh, frame was. So you can actually see um, that his arm was going to move from there to there. So I'm just going to press, take five photos of that again now. And then I'm just going to move Sam slightly as well. So maybe have Sam, maybe move his right arm slightly as if he's just noticed something as well. And again, each time we make a small little movement, we just capture a photograph of it. Right, well, so I'm pressing five each time just to make it last a little bit longer. So, Officer we'll Steele's arm back down again now. Again, just take five photos of that. And then I might move Sam slightly as if he's starting to move towards him. Maybe have him turning around slightly as if he's looking at 
do the character. I'm just going to have Officer Steel now again. I'm just going to have him turning around slightly as if he's let's see, it's a conversation with Sam. I'm just turning back around again. So whatever things you're using for your characters just try and make sure that they have quite a, a wide stable base because obviously you don't want them to be keeping falling over all the time it gets a bit frustrating then so these are quite good because they've got quite a wide stable base there to move them Like I said, these are really good because they can be a bit more realistic when being able to move the actual limbs as well. I think I maybe have. Oops. <laughs> Again, it's good that this is what's referred to as the onion skin, this is. So you can actually see uh, where the characters were. So if you do accidentally knock a character over, like I've just done there, or character accidentally gets moved, you can actually refer back to this and see uh, where it was uh, from the last uh, couple of shots that you took. I'm just going to do one more movement now and then I think we'll have the other character coming in. And then you can just press the play button at any time just to, to play back what you've done so far. So I'm just going to press this play button and see what it looks like. So, so we've taken 46 pictures there, but you can see that that's only a couple of seconds. So you can see the more pictures you take, the more frames you capture, uh, the, the longer it will, will last. So I'm just going to have this other character coming in now. Now this other character is the person who flies the rescue helicopter. So he's going to come down from the sky. Now what I've done is I've just put on some, tied some re really thin nylon string onto him. And you can see it slightly, but hopefully once we've got the background image added, that won't you won't actually see the string, so it'll look like he's kind of flying down from the sky. So what I'm going to do now, and obviously this will be easy with two people, one person will be able to move it and the other person will take the photo. So I'm just going to move him down slightly using the string, and as I'm doing it, I'm just going to try and take lots of photographs and down there. Now I'm just going to get rid of the string. Don't need that now. And I'm just going to position him back there, which is where he's just landed. And I'll just take another photo of that. And again, I'm going to just press the, the play button just to check that, make sure it looks okay. If you accidentally get something in the way like I've done there, see obviously that's not going to look right in the final video so you've got a, an undo button here this little back arrow here so if i just press that that will just uh, delete that last frame that i took so i'm just going to have this character moving slightly now towards the others
have no shaking hands. Maybe move Sam a bit towards him as well. Well, we've got to 100 frames now, so like I said that'll probably give me about about 10 seconds of footage. In fact, I might just play it and just have a look and see what that looks like. Okay, and then I think just to finish this scene off now, we'll just have him being going back to his rescue helicopter. Let's just tie some string back around him again. So I can just place him back there where he was. And um, got the string tied on him again now. So I can just start to slowly lower him up into the air. As I'm doing so, taking lots of photos. Again, the more you take, the longer it will last. Okay, and then for the time being that will do. You've also got this settings tab here. If you press on the settings button, this will enable you to change the project name. Also the aspect ratio, whether you want it widescreen or just standard size. And then you've also got this little slider here, and this will adjust the playback speed so its default setting is 12 frames per second so if you want the animation to last longer you can basically just slide it across and have more frames per second or if you want the animation to be shorter then you can slide it to the left and have less frames per second I'm going to keep it at 12 low for this one so I'll just press the play button now one more time just to watch what I've recorded Now what I can do now that is finished, if I just press this button here just to go back and then you'll see my animation that I've just uh, recorded is there. So as you can see I've taken 111 frames, that's 111 photos altogether and that gives me 9 seconds there of footage. Um, so as I said before the more frames you take obviously the longer uh, the video will be. Now I'm ready to save this first scene now, so to save it I just need to press this button here uh, with the arrow facing upwards and I'm going to export it to the camera roll I'm just going to select that option there and I'm going to choose that one there, that will give me the best quality and it will just take a, a few moments just to export A message should come up to say that it's exported. There we go. You move it exported to the camera roll. Just press OK. So I can just come out of this app now. And then if I just go into my photos. And there we can see the video is, is there. So as I say, what I want to do now to finish that off is go into the green screen doing cap, import that video in that I've just done, and add a background image to go with it.